Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this video is going to be a hopefully quick run through updating you on my uh, recent uh, pen BBS acquisitions. So in front of you is another example of where I consider to be pen BBS uh, really supporting us in the uh, pen hobby community and pen collecting community. So this is a selection of parts. And I got this on Etsy. It seems to be gone from Etsy um, as of the uh, end of March 2019. I still found it on eBay. So here's the Etsy listing. Here's the eBay listing. And PenBBS is fairly active on both sites. So if you don't find something on one site, it may be on the other. I find the prices to be almost identical on the same $6 shipping. And they do combine shipping per order. So if you're doing either of those, you just put items in a cart. And then when you're done, you check out or pay for it. And then there's just one charge for shipping. So I find this to be an incredible amount of stuff for 8 bucks. You got two converters, which by itself could be 8 bucks. You got five feeds, so those of you that might bend to feeds, taking out nibs. You got nib collars. You got a whole variety of different O-rings to match different parts of different pens, and that's just phenomenal. You got a piston for the 309. You have other seals here, which I'm assuming might be the 456 or the 355 or a pen I don't have, don't know. But I think this is excellent. So I feel very comfortable going forward that I'll be able to keep my pen BBS pens in tip top shape. But if any components need to be replaced or if I lose them, I now have the parts. So you may have seen the crabs holding up a number of pens in some of my pen videos. So here's four of them unadorned with pens so you can get to appreciate them. We got your green, your orange, your purple and your blue. There may be other colors you could probably, I did some searching and there's some other Asian internet sites that sell these. Um, I think they're from Japan. So they're really nice, but one cannot live by just crabs alone. These showed up recently on Etsy and I said, mm, I got to have them. So I picked these up and they came in these, again, substantial plastic bags. And what I really like is they use the same numbering system. So this is a 485, which is the model. And the color is 72, which is emerald. And then we have Starry Night. And then we have Sea Salt. And last but not least, we have Hawaii. So some of these colors I have in pens, some I don't. Some may or may not ever end up in pens, but this is just fun. They're flat on the bottom, so they uh, don't roll away, which would be unfortunate for a, a pen stop or pen uh, roll thing to roll away. So they're just fun. And, and, you know, the $6 shipping would preclude you probably just buying one of these, but I bought a pen. I threw these in there. I picked, you know, four colors that I thought would be fun, you know, four different types of colors. And so now I have them, and now the frogs can take a rest every once in a while. Maybe these dumbbells could be used for the crab's exercise. And I keep saying frog instead of crab. I apologize. So what pens have I recently got from Pen BBS? Well, I saw this one and I said, Alaska well, Squirrel has one. I've always loved this acrylic from Pen BBS. So I saw this on Etsy at a decent price. So I placed an order with it and I bought those pen roll stops. When I got the package, I was a little bit concerned because it says 28, which is the autumn color, but beneath it, it says dawn. But when I translate this, it's autumn. So somehow when they made this label, dawn got on there, which is another color instead of autumn. 
uh, Wassy Squirrels one. Here's a screenshot from his video that shows it is autumn, which it should. I mean, it's a uh, green, red, yellow, orange, a whole bunch of combinations. I think it's one of the more interesting, colorful acrylics. So some acrylics, I think, that Penn BBS use are just interesting and amazing because of their design, like a cracked ice design or a ribbon design, but this is just a great one for color. And I wanted to show that I can take this one apart easily, and as we saw the translation, it is a two-tone nib, which I think is, you know, a higher-end nib for them, standard feed, standard nib collar. So that's the pen. So you may ask, hey, do you got any other autumn pen BBS pens? And yes, I do. I have two other ones. So in addition to the 456, I have a 308 and a 267. I have a number of 267s that I bought, and I have to admit that they never turned into daily writers. I don't really use them as desk pens. I mean, I think it's a, an incredible design, like the 323 and other things that Pen BBS does, but I haven't found them practical, but to me, visually, they're just outstanding. So you may ask, what other 267s do you have? Well, we have berries here, and there's the autumn, and there's green, I forget the name, and there's the clear one. So I'll give you the actual numbers that correspond to these colors, but to me, I just think that this form factor of this pen just really pops with those colors. And I've tried to get a clear pen in each of the models because I think it just lets you see how the pen's put together and made. And, and I really appreciate that being a nerdy engineer. So this is another recent pen from Pen BBS. It's the 16, the clear version of the 471 pocket pen. And this one is engraved with fireworks. Unlike the Snowflake, 355 that I have, these are actual engravings. So they're laser engraved, my guess. And it just adds a, another nice touch. Again, Pen BBS seems to be going the extra mile to give us some unique and some interesting writing instruments. Here, that M is at the bottom below Pen BBS in China. That design is laser etched and it just looks nice. And again, it's something different. It's something that is appealing, at least to me. Doing my research, I found a link to some videos uh, from Asia, which I'll put in my description, that are just, I think, very interesting. And it shows how some people might use the 471 and make their own pens by combining parts. So this is also a new 471 that I acquired white. So I have white one, a black one, a clear one, and then some very interesting colors. And what makes this a little different is laser etched on there, which is very difficult to catch. You have to try some different lighting is a piggy. And if you take it off, you can see that the nib is also engraved with interesting engraving. This is a round, fine nib that I have on this one. So again, something unique, something different, something that just sets their pens apart a little bit. Here are my uh, seven 471s standing at attention. Uh, generally, the silver band at the bottom means it's a round, fine nib, and gold means it's the medium nib, but that's not always the case because the white picky pen has a medium nib in it. I just think these are impressive from a design element, from an aesthetic element, and uh, from a functional element. And so it hits all the right buttons. So we're gonna see the difference between the round fine nib and the round medium nib as they write. I think these 471s represent the three, what I would call styles of acrylics that, that I'm familiar with and comfortable with and enjoy. So the first one here is summer and it's kind of like that ribbon pattern. And then you have storm, which is more opaque and has a little bit more uh, chatoyancy to it. 
and a little bit more color variations. Then you have the cracked ice on the Miango one named after uh, a cat. And these are all just, I think, very nice materials to make a pen out of. You know, they feel good. They look good. That's all you need. So the metal band uh, has a little bit of resistance, so it stops rolling. It's not going to stop all rolling. And if the pen starts rolling, it will keep going if there's an angle. Yeah, you know, the 471 is not a pen I don't think anybody could use unposted. That is about as short as I think anything could possibly be. I could go to my uh, vintage and find probably a whole pen that was at length, but more of a novelty than an actual writing instrument. But once you put the cap onto the barrel, and yes, there is that opening there, and there's different ways of putting this together, but I like the metal band in the middle because I like the way it feels, and I don't care what that other end of the pen looks like. And this feels good in the hand. All the weight is more centered towards the nib, which is uh, something I enjoy in a pen. And this is that, you know, number six nib and a good size section that's pretty well standard, probably within a half a millimeter on all pen BBS pens and nice little flare out at the end. So from that viewpoint, it's a pen that I can use and write with quite a bit. So this is the summer one which has a medium nib in it. Let's see how it writes. So this is the ink that's in summer, Monteverdi Mulberry Noir. I mean, this nib is super smooth. This nib lays down a nice patch of ink. It has a little bit of bounce to it. I mean, I'm impressed considering the nib that they put in all the earlier pens was, you know, a consistent fine with a little bit of an upturn to it. I mean, this works with no pressure. And then if you put a little bit of pressure on it, it opens up a little bit more. I mean, you can easily color in a nice dense patch of ink with this. It's it's a great nib, and I'm extremely happy with it, and, and, and this color works well in this pen. I think you can hear that this nib isn't quite as smooth as the medium. And that's to be, you know, expected because this is a fine nib. I mean, it still lays down a nice patch of ink. And you may ask what this ink is. This ink is wisdom. So we have a Monteverdi ink in these first two pens with two different nibs on them. So I think we're comparing apples to apples. And this also lays down a decent amount of ink. It's not shy on putting down ink. So to me, one of the things that make fine nibs work is small writing. And writing on paper that may not be as ink friendly as you would like. So even though it's a fairly wet writer, it's not going to put down as much as the, as the medium nib did. So as a fine nib, I think this is okay, but it, you know, fine nibs are not what I focus on and, and what I enjoy. 
So I think we need to just see how consistent the 471 medium nibs are, or the or the new rounded medium nibs. So we're going to write with this one, which is a 471 37, and again this is a GM. So this is N. I A N G O, I think, you know. And this nib I also like. And we went to a little bit of a different ink. This has a, this is diamine bilberry. As you can see, I'm staying in the dark purplish blue family. So overall, I also love this nib. I mean, it lays down a, a, a nice patch of ink, it's very easy to write with. It's certainly not shy on putting down ink on paper. So overall, kudos. Um, Pen BBS has done another excellent job, I think, in adding variety and uh, giving us pen people something new and different to try. So hopefully I've covered enough to make everything interesting, give you some hopefully some new information. So thank you for watching. May have many great writing experiences and putting ink on paper just certainly floats my boat and hopefully does the same for yours. So we've reached the end of this video and we're going to say bye until the next video. This is a nice writer as we get to the end of the paper. <laughs>